Welcome back to part three of our glitch shader being created in shader graph. Okay, so we have this glitchy effect going on, which is cycling based on a sine wave. If you wanted to make that wave a little more complex, you could add in a cosine wave as well, or add another sine wave and offset it, which will give you a less cyclical uh, effect even though we've got a lot of random stuff going on and now what we're going to do is actually go back into here and I'll show you how you can set the color of this thing so currently my shader graph is not got any color and it's just gray so let's focus on this here our base color has to come into here now in the case of my model remember at the beginning I had three separate parts so there's like the skin of Slender Man his suit and then there's also a top section as well so you kind of need like three different materials that all have this particular shader on them to combine them together so we can bring in a base color through um, the input up here in our blackboard so we're just going to go plus and we'll put in a um, color which is this one here let's call it base color like that if you wanted to bring through a texture file on that you can also bring that through and then sample it and get a color out of that but we're just gonna do it simply at this time so here's our base color over in my inspect you can see it's automatically set to black so that's colors what's going to be set by default let's bring this base color now drag and drop it into our shader and feed it up into the base color here and that's going to get us a black effect that you can see there okay so with that done let's save it we'll switch back to unity and now I've got uh, that color set. If I have a look over in my glitch material, it's set to a base color of white. But in here, you can then set it to, well, pretty much anything you want if you want a green Slender Man. But the idea here is that you have to create three different types of material for this particular model because it requires them. So let's come over to the inspector. I'm gonna make this back to white again. So that's our white component. All right, so glitch map has our white in it. Let's just duplicate that. So control D on it to create two more, which will also um, appear with the same image. Two, let's make that our gray one. So come over into the inspector and set that to gray like that. And then we also want a black one. So select glitch map one and set that color to black. And this is glitch black and this one is glitch gray okay then we select our model we can then put those values in here so the first one we've got is white um, let's put black into element 2 which is his suit in this particular case and then we want to put gray into the third element there um, and white at the top which is wrong if you have a look at my actual model of slender man his shirt is white and his skin is gray so let's just swap those two things around so we want to put gray into the white area and then the white into the gray area Okay, that's better. Now he's sort of dressed correctly. So that's bringing in that particular base color for the three separate materials using the same shader. What if you actually then wanted to manipulate your color coming in and add a little bit of interest to it, such as a static sort of noise property? Well, that's easy enough to do if we zoom in here because we've got our base color coming in. What we can do is add noise to that or multiply noise to it depends on the actual effect that you're after so let's actually bring that in and we will add noise to it and see what that determines so let's bring that up to our base color there and then to the add let's bring that out and just add a simple noise into there um, which is going to give your output color now if we have a look you can see that you've got this sort of stony 
sort of effect going on in there for that color. So let's now save this and have another look back at our glitch effect in the scene. So what's happening with our glitchy coloring, you can see it's getting applied even when we're not sort of jittering in here. So we need to make sure that we keep our base color pure when we're not applying the glitch and we need to then add say this noisy factor when we are applying the glitch. So back into our glitch shader let's just move these over so I can play around with this color value grab these three things. Okay so whether or not we do this particular ad is going to depend on whether we're applying the actual glitch. Now, when does the glitch get applied? Let's come back and have a look through all of these things. So essentially what's happening is the glitch is happening by this step value. When this step value is white, then we're getting the glitch. When it's black, like now, we're not getting the glitch. So we can use the value from this step as a determinant in the um, noise that's being applied here. Now it's easy enough to do if we simply just multiply again. So let's remove that, add another multiply. So we're going to get all of our simple noise value when we've got white down here or none of it when we're not glitching at all. Okay, so let's now save that and pop back over into our scene to see that in action. Okay, so now we have our glitch happening. We get our noise going on top of that. So he's basically changing color. And then when he's not glitching, he's fine. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed putting that together and I hope you also got some inspiration how you can manipulate these values even more. Remember nothing is really sort of set in stone in the, the way you can do a particular effect especially like this. There's many different ways you could do it and I'd really encourage you to have a play around with those values especially the randomness and how that's gotten from seeds out of time and the cyclical nature of the sine wave and how you can actually use that to turn effects on and off. So I will see you again in my next tutorial. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.